Welcome back team to general chemistry chapter 8 the gas phase. We're going to start off with 8.1 where we talk about the gas phase. So gases are the least dense phase of matter. They're fluid because they take up the shapes of their containers and they're easily compressible. Their variable temperatures, pressure, volumes, and number of moles and the pressure equivalencies include one atmospheric pressure is equal to 760 mmHg is equal to 760 torr, which is equal to 101.325 kilopascals. Temperature at STP is equal to 0 degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin, and 1 atmospheric pressure and 22.4 liters. Temperature at standard state, however, is 25 degrees Celsius, and it's 298 Kelvin. So moving on to simple mercury barometer, it measures the incident, usually atmospheric pressure. If you increase the pressure, more mercury is forced into the column and that increases its height. Whereas if you decrease the pressure, the mercury flows out of the column under its own weight and it decreases in height. So an increase in pressure, the mercury level in the tube will increase. As you can see in the green arrows here, the more you push down, so the more you increase the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, the more increase in the level of height of the mercury in the tube will be. However, if you stop pushing down on that level on the outside, the mercury level in that tube will decrease and will come to a point where it's in equilibrium. Moving on to 8.2, we're going to talk about the ideal gases. So the ideal gas law is equal to P times V is equal to N times R times T. P is for pressure, V is for volume, N is the number of moles, R is the ideal gas constant, which is 8.314 joules over Kelvin times mole, and T is temperature in Kelvin. So we have an example here, and it's asking what volume would 12 grams of helium occupy at 27 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 380 mmHg? So we write out our equation, PV is equal to nRT, and we know that 8 is equal to 8.21 times 10 to the negative 2, L times atmospheric pressure over moles times Kelvin. So the first thing we want to do is convert P from 380 mmHg to atmospheric pressure, and we do that by writing out 380 mmHg times one atmospheric pressure over 760 mmHg. So the mmHg on both sides cancel out, and the units that we have now are ATM. So we're gonna go 380 divided by 760, and we get 0 0.5. Step two, we convert the temperatures in degrees Celsius to Kelvin, and we do that by taking 27 degrees Celsius plus 273, and that gives us 300 Kelvin. For step three, we're going to find the moles of helium, so N is equal to mass over molar mass. So the mass for helium we're given is 12 grams, and the molar mass of helium, we can look at the periodic table and get 4 grams per mole, and that should give us 3 moles of helium. And now we're going to use the original equation where we rearrange it to solve for V. So it's going to be 0 0.5 atm, which is the atmospheric pressure that we calculated before. V is equal to 3 moles of helium, 0 0.0821 liters per atmospheric pressure over moles times Kelvin times 300 Kelvin. So we rearrange this and our final value ends up becoming 148 liters. And that's how you solve that. Moving on to density with a small p, we write p is equal to m over v, where m is the mass and v is the volume. And we can expand that further and write p times m and r times t where this part of the equation is actually combined with the ideal gas law. So the combined gas law we're looking at is P1 is equal to V1 over T1 and is equal to P2 V2 over T2, where P is the pressure, V is the volume, and T is the temperature. Now with P1 and P2, these one and two values, we can use this part of the equation when we're comparing between 
two different pressures and volumes and temperatures. And on the right here, we have just rearranged the equation to solve for V2. Just to show you guys that you can rearrange this equation depending on what variable you're trying to solve for. Moving on to the Avogadro's principle, we have N over V is equal to K. So N is the number of moles, and V is the volume, and the K is the constant. Or we can write this in a different way if we're trying to compare two different given values. So that would be N1 over V1 and N2 over V2. Moving on to the Boyle's law, we have K is equal to PV. Again, K is a constant, and P is the pressure in atmospheres, and V is the volume in liter. And once again, if we're trying to compare it between two different variables, we have P1, V1 is equal to P2 times V2. Next, we have is the Charles law, where the K constant is equal to V over T, so V is volume, T is temperature in Kelvin. And once again, if we have two different variables and we want to solve for them and compare, then we use the equation on the right. Next, we have the gay lucas law, which is the constant is equal to P over T, and that's pressure over temperature. And once again, on the right, if we're given different uh, values for the variables, we can compare and contrast, so we can use that. And underneath here, I just have a simple, simplified uh, equation representing all the different laws. So the whole thing with PV over TN equals the constant is the ideal. Then you have to combine in pink, uh, Boyle's, Charles, Avogadro's, and see how they're all kind of fitted together. And combined, they make the ideal gas law. So we're going to move forward to Dalton's law of partial pressure, where PT, which is the total pressure, is equal to the partial pressures of gases uh, like A, B, and C. So A, B, and C are just different uh, gases that are given to us in the equation or in a passage. And to get the total, all we have to do is just add them together. So the partial pressure of a gas is related to its mole fraction, and we write that by writing PA, which is the pressure of gas A. So A can be any gas. It doesn't necessarily have to be the gas A. Um, so PA is equal to XA, where X is any element, so the mole fraction of A times PT, which is the total pressure. So this is where XA is equal to moles of gas A over the total moles of that gas. And that's how you would calculate uh, the partial pressure of a specific element given the mole fraction and the total pressure. So moving on to Henry's law, we have the concentration of A is equal to KH, which is Henry's constant, times PA, which is the partial pressure of A. And we can always rewrite this equation where we have the, where we have the concentration of A1 over pressure 1, which is equal to concentration of A2, and pressure too. Okay, so we're going to move on to 8.3 where we talk about the kinetic molecular theory and that attempts to explain the behavior of gas particles have negligible volume and do not have intermolecular attractions or repulsions and they undergo random collisions with each other and the walls of the container. These collisions between gas particles or with the walls of the container are considered elastic and the average kinetic energy of the gas particles is directly proportional to the temperature. So the way we can write the average molecular speed is Ke, which is kinetic energy, is equal to mv squared over 2. Now that's the physics definition of kinetic energy, and we can expand that further with 3 over 2 Kb, which is Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin, times the temperature, which is in Kelvin. Now moving forward to root mean squared speed, which is URMS. So URMS is equal to the square root of 3 times R times T over M, where R is the ideal gas constant, which is 8.314 joules over Kelvin times mole, and T is temperature, and M is molar mass. And then we have the Gram's Law, where 
it's r1 over r2 is equal to the square root of m2 over m1. And r is the diffusion rate of gas 1 and gas 2. And m is the molar masses of gas 1 and gas 2. So to get that, that's the equation that we use. So diffusion is the spreading out of particles from low concentration to high concentration. That comes down to basic chemistry. And effusion, however, is the movement of gas from one compartment to another through a small opening under pressure. So we're going to move on to 8.4 where we talk about real gases. So real gases deviate from ideal behavior under high pressure. We can also write that as low volume and low temperature conditions. Moderately high pressures and low volume and low temperatures will be a result when real gases will occupy less volume than predicted by the ideal gas law because the particles have intermolecular attractions. However, extremely high pressures and low volume and temperature will result with real gases will occupy more volume than predicted by the ideal gas law because the particles op occupy physical space. And underneath here, we have the van der Waals equation of state used to correct the ideal gas law for 1. intermolecular attractions and 2. Uh, molecular volume. So we have P plus N2 times A over V2, and we have V minus NB is equal to NRT. So as you can see before, it's PV is equal to NRT. However, they've just expanded the pressure and volume. So N2 is moles, the V2 is volume, and the A and B are the physical constants experimentally determined for each gas. And that's your van der Waal equation of the state. Thank you for joining me for chapter 8. I'll see you guys in chapter 9. Take care.